So in one of the most recent chapters of Four Nights of Apocalypse, we got to see silhouettes of the Four Nights of Apocalypse and basically what punishment uh, they kind of represent. Now, obviously, we haven't gotten to see all of the characters yet, but basing off what I know of the Seven Deadly Sins and kind of where I believe the series is going, I just want to give like my predictions on what on who I think everybody is as well as kind of the reasoning behind that. Um, one big thing too that I do want to talk about is like why they have the punishment that they do. So like why would like uh, obviously the one that we see is like Percival be considered that. Because one of the big things in the original Seven Deadly Sins is that each of the members had a sin according to something that they did. But I feel like one of the major parts of the story is that the sin that they committed nece didn't necessarily line up like there was something off about it like take bond for example bond was the sin of greed uh because of his immortality basically since he drank from the fountain of youth it caused the fairy king forest to like be destroyed uh, meaning that, like his greed caused that but as we know in the story that wasn't necessarily the actual case like there's way more to the story and that's kind of how it is for all of these sins like basically they got charged with a crime but there's so much more to the story that it was really misinterpreted um so i kind of want to go over that what could be it for each one one thing i will say before i get started is i do feel like these silhouettes outside of percival's obviously because that's just what he looks like but i feel like these silhouettes will be somewhat fake outs like i don't think this is what everybody like all the knights look like currently they i feel like they'll probably look way different um, just because if you remember back to Seven Deadly Sins, the wanted posters that had the Seven Deadly Sins on them were kind of fake outs. Not a lot of the sins really looked like how they actually looked. Like Bond looked pretty different from his poster. Meliodas looked completely different from his. King, Gother, so on and so forth. So I feel like these silhouettes are 100% fake outs. Like I feel like they're going to look way different and not necessarily be all these big buff hulking men while Percival is just like this like goofball who's hanging out with the rest of them. Uh, so I'm going to start with the main character, obviously I'm going to start with Percival, and Percival as we see correlates to death. Now I feel like with Percival, it's obvious that he's going to be one since he's the main character, um, and this is clearly him, there's no like d dispute there, he's the only one that looks like way different from the other ones. Um, but the thing with him is I think, I want to say he, he's going to be death because he's going to kill somebody really important, and that's what's going to make him like seen as an apocalypse or seen as like a punishment, or like I want to say that's what's going to give him that, that title. I'm not for sure who, who he's going to kill that's really important important like i don't think it's going to be you know arthur the current king because he would have to be regarded as one before that point um so possibly ironside could be the person that he would kill that would make him be seen as like uh the apocalypse of death or the punishment of death maybe may along those lines as for the very next person directly next to him uh this person is war and i believe this person to be lancelot and that would be the child of bond and elaine now i believe this person to be lancelot just because i don't have really much other reason outside of they have a spear like uh, a spear type weapon and if you look back lancelot had his own one shot after the seven deadly sins had ended and in that one shot he used a spear for the most part that he you know it was like a spearhead he got from a, a human and he tied it to a stick that was basically kind of what he used another thing to take note of is that he has kind of like you can kind of see i might be looking too much into it you can kind of see the guy for um war has this kind of like scar across his head a little bit and it is kind of reminiscent of what um lancelot had you know because he got that in a fight with tristan also the the clothing is kind of reminiscent of bond as well as the like overall style of his hair so those things together are kind of what's leading me to believe that this would be uh lancelot now, as for the next person, this one is going to be Pestilence or Plague, depending on the translation that you're reading. And this one is, uh, without a doubt, Tristan or Dristan, however you want to say his name. And that would be the kid of Meliodas and Elizabeth. Now, I feel like in terms of silhouettes, outside of Percival's, this one is super obvious because the hair is the literal exact same. Uh, so there's definitely no doubt in my mind there. Because typically when it comes to anime and manga, if the hair is similar, it's probably exactly who, who you're thinking of. No reason to overcomplicate it. Now, the, the thing that's weird here is why would he be considered the um, apocalypse or punishment of uh, pestilence or plague? And my thing is, I believe that has to do with his birth or with just with who he is as a person. Because if you think about it, Meliodas is... You know he is the demon lord technically while his mom is a goddess like so he's basically this the offspring of he's half demon half goddess so i feel like his existence is somewhat troublesome because if you remember meliodas and the previous demon lord could not both exist in the world at the same time without it being destroyed so it could be potentially that meliodas 
might not be able to exist at the same time as his son. Um, meaning that there could potentially be some type of disaster that will befall Britannia if they're both alive at the same time. And Meliodas being the kind of guy he is, he totally go to the underworld um, instead of living in the actual like human world uh, just so his son could have a nice life. Meliodas would definitely do that. So I kind of think that his uh, plague or sin or apocalypse or punishment, whatever you want to call it, would pertain to just him being alive in the same space as his father that's kind of where i think this is going and then as for the last person starvation or famine this one is a total throw up in the air because we have no idea whose kid this could possibly be like they're not it's not as immediately obvious as the other ones on one hand you could say that this could potentially be the kid of king and diane but my thing with that is as i've said in the past is the child of king and diane is going to be half fairy half giant fairies and giants both live for a very long time like they live for hundreds and hundreds of, of years and the thing with giants is giants age really really slow so i feel like four nights of the apocalypse isn't necessarily that far along after the ending of seven deadly sins so i feel like any child of king and diane wouldn't really be able to do anything or wouldn't really be mentally old enough mentally or physically old enough to do anything in such a short amount of time seeing as how slow giants age maybe the fairy part could offset it kind of like uh kind of like how lancelot is seemingly aging normal despite being half fairy but i really feel like that half giant might slow his aging down um i know another really popular one would be it's the kid of um uh, Zeldris. It could be Zeldris' kid, which would be really interesting. Uh, I personally, Zeldris was one of my favorite characters in the original Sins, so I would love for it to be a kid of his just to possibly get more of that personality type or somewhat more of that character in the form of his son or child in the series. The only thing on why it could it could potentially not be Zeldris' kid or not be like any kid related to Zeldris in any way is that since we already have Tristan, like Melios' kid in there, we already have a demon in there. So I kind of think like one of the big draws of the seven deadly sins is that for the most part everybody was something different with the exception of bond and Escanor both being humans but they're humans on very different levels so like i feel like us having two demons in the four nights apocalypse i'm like obviously it's very possible like i'm not saying it couldn't happen but i just feel like they're going to go a different route and have it just be something different as for one of the possible things that i thought is i thought this, this could the last person could be a potential like creation of gother like say gother created some type of child uh just to kind of get the experience of raising someone and like that could be the potential last one because i really did enjoy gother's character type in like seven deadly sins like how just how he was extremely logical but he didn't understand any matters of emotions or of the uh, human heart so i love to see that kind of character carry over into four nights of the apocalypse i feel like it would be really funny to get that kind of character type and of course the very last speculation is that it could be someone completely new it could be some totally new character that we've never even seen heck it could even be donnie donnie could potentially be the night of famine or uh starvation we, we have no idea it's very possible well i i i highly doubt it because i feel like the fox would have said something in this moment but it's possible who knows um let me know who you guys think it is down below but as far as the reason why there's starvation or famine they're obviously going to bring about some disaster that's going to ruin the, the food supply for the nation i feel like that one's obvious um but as for who it is like i said no idea um, but yeah, that's basically my thoughts on the, you know, four nights of the apocalypse, like who they are and why they are called what they are. That's kind of my opinion on that. I would love to know you guys' thoughts about it down below, who you guys think is who, as well as the identity of this fourth person. Because I feel like we could speculate forever on this fourth person. That's why I really hope the story goes to him first and not Lancelot or Tristan because those ones are so obvious. So like, I really want them to go to uh this guy first and then there's always the off chance that myself as well as a lot of other people who respect like could be totally wrong um so it's always just really exciting just to talk about it here so let me know how you guys feel about the video down below and your predictions and also make sure you guys like the video as well as subscribe to the channel for more four nights of apocalypse i definitely want to do more videos like this because these are always really fun but aside from that i have nothing else for you guys so enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you all in my next video